Amin. Let us continue in prayer. Our gracious and loving Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we humbly come before you as a nation bowing before your throne of mercy and before your majesty, acknowledging how faithful you have been to us as a nation, Kenya, as a people, and especially so, even to our government. We thank you for the President, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto. We thank you for the mandate that you have given him to govern this nation and to lead us in, unto prosperity. We present to you our economy. We present to you our agriculture. We present every sector, O oh God, that you may guide us and take care of this nation. We thank you that, Lord, your hand has been gracious upon us, and we want to thank you and praise you and continue doing so for your love for this nation. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for all people who have been given leadership in this country. How we pray that out of the clarion call by our president, that everybody will be accountable in their own levels, and that, Lord, you are going to lead this nation. Protect us from all evil and from all harm. And above all, O oh God, we pray that you sanctify our minds, give us a culture of accountability, give us a culture of openness, and give us a culture of obedience. Lord, we know and acknowledge that with obedience, you have promised great blessings upon this nation. Prosper this nation improve us, O oh Lord, and help us in Jesus' name. We thank you, we worship you, and we remember this nation before you, and especially, O oh God, praying for our young people. We pray that, Lord, you continue leading and guiding and shaping their destiny. Be glorified in this activity and fellowship, so that, Lord, as we pray, your goodness and favor will continue to reign in our hearts and in our souls, for this is our humble prayer of faith, trusting and believing in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord bless you. You may take your seats. Your Excellency, the President of this great nation, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, the Deputy Governor Honorable Njoroge Mushiri, the uh, CSICT and Digital Economy Honorable Elio Dowalo, the Data Commissioner Madam Immaculate Kasait, CSs and PSs present, ambassadors present, all local and national leaders present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, with your permission, at this point, I would like to invite Madam Immaculate Kasait, who is the Data Commissioner, to give us her welcoming and opening remarks, then also take over the program. Welcome, Madam Kasait. Uh, Your Excellency, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, uh, the Deputy Governor for Nairobi, uh, Njoroge Mushiri, our CS, Elio Dualo, Ambassadors present here, CSS present, uh, PSS present, um, stewards of industry, our exhibitors, and members of the public present. Good morning. Your Excellency, I have a short presentation to just take you through about the Office of the Data Commissioner. Uh, when it comes up. Uh, quickly, I want to go straight to why we are here today. Essentially, we are here to create awareness about this day of uh, Data Privacy Day. And today's, this, today's theme is promoting data privacy in a digitally transformed economy. It's in line and resonates with the government's agenda of digital superhighway and creative economy. 
Your Excellency, just briefly in terms of context, if you look at data protection at an international level, we started issues around data protection. We look at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. These, uh, these days started being celebrated on 28th of January in 1981 under Convention 108, and, uh, the, and uh, oh, we also have the General Data Protection Regulation. At a regional level, we have the African Union Convention on Cybersecurity, what we commonly call the Malabo Convention. The African, also, the African uh, Union also passed what we call the Data Protection Framework, and we have 33 African countries that have been able to adopt data protection in one way or another. Your Excellency, many people will ask, why data protection? Why is it important? I want us to reflect just for a moment. When you're in your house, there are certain information you hold dear to your heart. Your name, your address, your, your location, and on your sensitive information on health. The Constitution guarantees that right to privacy. Imagine if this information fell on the wrong hands. That is why this office is here, to make sure that we are protecting your information. The Data Protection Act um, was, was, was enacted in 2020. The office came into force in November 2020. 2020 sorry. Our mandate, as I said, is to regulate the processing of personal data, all that information that you hold that is so dear to your heart. Our role is to make sure it doesn't fall in the wrong hands. And if it does, we are able to take certain precautions. We ensure that the rights of the data subject are promoted. We ensure that there is a legal and institutional framework to protect your personal data. The functions of your office, Your Excellency, we are responsible for registration of data controllers and data processors. We are responsible for oversight. We are responsible for self-regulation, realizing that this area is very vast. We also encourage self-regulation, inspection, international cooperation, conduct of assessment, investigation, and creating awareness that that is why we are here today. In the last two years, Your Excellency, we've had uh, several achievements. One is uh, we have three sets of regulation. One came in, they all came into force last year. Guidance notes, we've had an opportunity to write uh, guidance notes for different government of, uh, organization. Um, we've also had uh, registration of data controllers and processors. We have a strategic plan. We've been able, Your Excellency, in line with your, in, in, in line of your, of your, of your call for the, for digitization of government services to automate the, our services. We have the ERP in our offices. We have, uh, we are members of uh, different international organization. We are also, have also operationalized the office. We are looking forward to going to different regions. So, your Excellency, why data protection in the context of the digital superhighway? And what does this mean for us as an office? One, we know that collecting of in, or processing of data cuts across all aspects of government priority agenda. One is agriculture. Just recently, Your Excellency, we did do an advisory during the collection of, uh, of the, the, during the collection of information by Ministry of Agriculture on farmers, because they'll be collecting information which will help us make decisions about subsidies. They'll also collect information from the population. So when you see the connection in terms of how much information they're collecting and what it's being used for. Health data, Your Excellency, is very sensitive, yet without health data, we are not able to diagnose, we are not able to, re uh, to treat, we are not able to research. So that is our role to make sure that when that health data is collected, it's the institutions collecting it secure it. Housing and settlement, Your Excellency, we know that housing is one of the basic rights to make sure that whoever is going into this industry, Your Excellency, they collect information and that it is secure. Under micro, small, medium enterprise, Your Excellency, we know majority of the Kenyans actually are in small business. We know that the ministry under the leadership of uh, CS Owalo, one of the targets is to have as over 25,000 um, hotspots for Wi-Fi. These people will be transacting. They'll be transacting with different people in different parts of the country and also globally. Ours is to make sure as they transact, that space is also secure. Your Excellency, under the Digital Superhighway also, we continue to work with different institutions, that is CONSA, uh, in making sure that the government work goes on as planned. Your Excellency, on the registration, uh, the, we, up there we display the process of registration. You go online, 
you apply for registration, we verify your document, we issue a certificate which is also digital. It is renewed after two years. So far, Your Excellency, we've been able to register 14, 17 applications so far. And under this, Your Excellency, just shortly, I would request we have NTSA CEO who we will be issuing a certificate. You, you will be issuing your certificate today. Maybe he can stand for recognition. We also have Marketing Society of Kenya. They, have, they are part of the people who've registered for as controllers. Marketing Society of Kenya. He's here, Your, your Excellency. We also have um, a small medium enterprise youth group. Uh, perhaps they can stand where they are. And also we have uh, uh, Jami Telecom, who are also being uh, issued with a certificate today, Your Excellency. In conclusion, Your Excellency, uh, when it comes to issues of matter data protection, uh, what we are trying to preempt is um, the risk of discriminating against data subjects in the information fell in the wrong hands. There could be identity theft. We have seen situation of cyber bullying and we also seen that the importance of ethical handling of data. It's important as data controller and data processor continue to do innovation. They make sure that this information they collect is secure. Your Excellency, I wish to emphasize that the Office of the Data Commissioner and we have told people it's not here to kill innovation. We know that's the only way to move forward. We appreciate the continuous, uh, continuous uh, partnership we've had, including with KRA, including with uh, some of our big data controllers, like, uh, CBK, and many other regulators. We have emphasized that government institutions have a lawful basis for collecting information. So it's important that that uh, is also comes across. The benefits of data protection, one, is increased job opportunity. Uh, we see an opportunity for uh, employing data, protector, uh, data protection officers. We see opportunity for trainings. We see the Data Protection uh, Act also spurring economic growth through innovation and online trading. We see improvement in uh, investor confidence because if people know that as Kenya, we are securing the digital space, we are securing the digital space through data protection, we are able to do that. And of course, we also see the investment uh, in the digital infrastructure. That is the short presentation. I'll hand over to the MC. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Asante. Thank you very much, Madam Kasait. With your permission, Your Excellency, at this point, I would like to invite the Ambassador to Kenya from Germany, His Excellency Thomas Wimmer, to also make some few remarks. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, Dr. William Ruto, the President of the Republic and Commander-in-Chief of the Defense Forces, the Honorable Eliot Owalo, CS for Information, Communications, and Digital Economy, the Honorable Deputy Governor of Nairobi, our good friend and cooperation partner, the Honorable Immaculate Kasaid, the Data Protection Commissioner. I would also like to uh, say hi to my colleague, Irene Garibaldi. Uh, she's the European Union Head of Cooperation and works very closely with us um, in the matter of the, uh, data protection. Ladies and gentlemen, Good morning and happy International Data Protection Day. Kenya is one of the pioneers in terms of digitalization. Very obviously, my country, Germany, and many other countries can learn a lot from Kenya. Kenya is a digital heavyweight. With Kenyans going online in record numbers, the digital transformation has therefore also become a centerpiece Kenyan-German relations. Jointly with the European Union, Germany is investing close to 3 billion shillings in support of Kenya's transition towards a sustainable and human-centered digital economy. We do this through our joint project called Digital Transformation Center. I am also proud to announce a new initiative on the digitalization of TVET institutions in Kenya, funded by Germany France, and the EU, adding another 9.5 billion shillings. Thank you. Data is becoming an increasingly important commodity, something we could not have imagined a few years ago.
However, data is only valuable if we know how to use it sensibly and how to protect it. Data-driven innovations have the potential to transform people's lives and to create major benefits for companies and societies. But this comes with significant risks in terms of data safety and data privacy. Challenges which we are all facing, Kenya, Germany, and many other countries alike. Kenya has firmly positioned itself as a regional and global leader on data protection. The adoption of the Data Protection Act is a remarkable achievement. And the impressive work of the Data Protection Commissioner speaks for itself. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the world's first data protection law was, adapted, was adopted in Germany in 1970. The German federal state of Hesse enacted the world's first data protection act. Last year, on this day, I joked that I didn't even know we had data then, but it's good to know that they were well protected if we had any. Since then, data protection laws have been spreading across the globe. Germany and the EU have been Kenya's prime partners for the implementation of the Data Protection Act since the onset. We have been working closely with the Data Protection Commissioner and the Ministry of Information, Communications, and the Digital Economy to establish a strong data protection culture in Kenya. Data protection is a civil right, and governments have the responsibility to create the framework for, our, for, the, for the citizens. But data protection is also a business asset. Kenya's comprehensive data protection and cybersecurity framework is developing into a strong pull factor for foreign companies to invest. As German Development Corporation and as Team Europe, we look forward to partnering with you here in Kenya, but also in international fora to jointly shape the global data protection architecture. Kenya has all the ingredients to fast track its digital transformation. I would like to thank Your Excellency, the President, the ICT Ministry, and the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner for working with us and organizing this event in exactly this spirit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Let's give him another warm um, clap. And at this point, Your Excellency, with your permission, I would like to invite the Deputy Governor for Nairobi, Honorable Njeroge Mushiri, who will stand in for Governor Johnson Sakaja. Tumpigie Makofi. Thank you. Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, CS Eliud Owalo, the Data Commissioner, Ambassadors here present, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Njoro Gamshiri, as you've been told. I stand here on behalf of Governor Sakaja, who could not make it uh, to this event. And first of all is to welcome you to the city of Nairobi. And we are very pleased that uh, this is happening in our capital. In the city of Nairobi, in our government, we've already um, adopted uh, technology in a number of things that we are doing. We have a state-of-the-art data center that we was established quite a while back and which we are now using effectively to be able to deliver services to uh, our people. Uh, Your Excellency will be pleased to know that we have also set up uh, a smart Nairobi directorate to be able to uh, digitize and, and uh, automate a lot of our functions within the, the, the city. And we also set up uh, a Hustler Opportunities Directorate that we will serve largely on the back of our technology. Uh, in this regard, then, therefore, the data that we collect will need to be uh, carefully uh, protected. We need to be able to uh, enhance protection of uh, uh, personal information while we allow it to be accessed by the various parties in terms of decision making and in terms of uh, carrying out what is uh, lawful government uh, business. We will also uh, be looking at uh, some of the other areas that we need to automate, like uh, in street lights. We can, we can do a lot of work on the street lights. We can you have smart poles, which we can then use to collect data across the city that we use to process and manage uh, our uh, operations within the city. Uh, in addition to that, we are implementing a GIS system that will allow us to do street addressing, and that enables us to get very efficient in terms of uh, rates, 
collection, business permit licensing, and all that that we need to do to be able to drive our revenues up in the city. It's therefore important that all these data that we collect is carefully protected, is carefully managed, is carefully stored, and is carefully uh, dispensed to those parties that need to access it. Therefore, uh, we're happy that the Data Protection uh, Commissioner and their team are focusing on this um, day to be able to enlighten our people about the importance of this function. Uh, without much uh, further ado, I'd like uh, to thank you all very much for coming and wish you a good day. Thank you. Thank you, DG. And at this point, I will now call upon the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Information, Communication and Digital Economy, uh, Honorable uh, Eliud Owalo, who will come and give some brief remarks and then uh, welcome His Excellency the President. Welcome, sir. His Excellency the President, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed, good afternoon. As you are aware, ladies and gentlemen, the Kenya Kwanzaa government, under the stewardship of His Excellency the President, has got a very, very ambitious digital transformation strategy. That strategy, ladies and gentlemen, entails the digital superhighway as a thematic area in the Kenya Kwanzaa plan. And to operationalize that, we are embarking on an ambitious program of rolling out 100,000 kilometers of fiber optic cable to enhance the ICT infrastructure, infrastructure in all parts of the country. We are establishing and operationalizing 25,000 free Wi-Fi hotspots all over the country and also in the same vein, setting up a total of 1,450 digital hubs in all the wards in the country, ladies and gentlemen. Equally, we are embarking on an ambitious digital literacy program among members of the public and public officials so that there is an optimal level of uptake of the ICT infrastructure that we are rolling out so that we are able to move towards the digital transformation agenda that is envisaged. We are also embarking on a digital entrepreneurship program that would ensure that Kenya as a country becomes a manufacturer of both digital infrastructure uh, and software. While doing this, we have now embarked on the process of digitalizing government services and also digitizing government records, ladies and gentlemen. Within the context of our meeting today, we appreciate the fact that we need to ensure that there is an enabling framework from a policy, regulatory, and legal perspective that ascertains that there is both data protection and data privacy. So the delicate balancing act that we have to exercise from a policy, legal, and regulatory perspective, ladies and gentlemen, is to ensure that while conforming to the Data Protection Act on one hand, on the flip side of it, we must also ensure that there are adequate provisions within the law that will not inhibit operationalization of the Access to Information Act because we have got fundamental entities at government and even the private sector levels that would require to access information in line with their constitutional mandates as enshrined in both their mandates and the 2020 constitutional dispensation. And I want to assure you that as a ministry, we will constantly consult with relevant stakeholders depending on unfolding events from time to time to ensure that we have got that enabling policy, legal, and regulatory framework to strike a balance between the Data Protection Act and Access to Information Act, ladies and gentlemen. With those few remarks, may I now have the distinguished honor and privilege to invite His Excellency the President to come over and address the congregation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eliud. Please, let's take our seats. Asante Nisana. Um, 
Cabinet Secretary for ICT and Digital Economy, Eliud Wallo, uh, our sister, Immaculate Kasait, our Data Commissioner, Ambassador, my good friend from Germany, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I'm Jambo. Mambo Nyaje. <laughs> You're too quiet. <clears throat> uh, first, let me congratulate Immaculate for a wonderful presentation. I learned a few things as I listened to her about the whole scope and space around data and data protection. Congratulations, Madam, for doing a good job. Um, I'm very happy to join you this morning on this occasion as we observe the International Data Privacy Day, as it gives us an excellent opportunity to reflect and reason about possibilities, constraints, opportunities, as well as threats that define the field of privacy, especially in matters data. When the first such day was marked over four decades ago, Kenya had not plugged into the information technology data universe that was just taking off then. Today, we have not only caught up with the most advanced jurisdictions, we are poised to seize leadership in innovative domains that are destined to define the digital future and the knowledge economy. Like the rest of the world, we are in the grip of the fourth industrial revolution that is underway, which has radically changed our world and our lives within a very short time. Cumulative technological developments now happening over the span of a few years routinely outstrip by far the radical transformations and historic progress achieved over centuries in what has been documented as the Industrial Revolution. Life, work, society, and government are all undergoing unprecedented forms and rates of change owing to connectivity, automation, artificial in intelligence, nanotechnology, and robotics. As a result, all sorts of new possibilities emerge every day, whilst traditional definitions of work and leisure are being challenged and redefined on a continuous basis. It is a proud moment for a forward-looking nation like Kenya to be able to embrace this brave new world and make our way in it with the awareness that we must move fast in order to develop the capacity to derive maximum benefits from its opportunities. We can do a lot of things in countless different and much better ways that satisfy infinitely diverse requirements of many people around the globe. The barriers to real-time interac interaction on a global scale no longer exist. People can work from anywhere, and many activities that were considered leisure are now lucrative lines of work. At the same time, this brave new world is vulnerable to antisocial agencies on a much more devastating scale. Every time we connect, we become exposed to relentless waves of attempted attacks and breaches of security. Data, as the currency of the new age, is ever in demand, and all sorts of entities employ all manner of strategies to obtain and leverage on it. It is the duty of the government to deploy necessary resources and remain vigilant in order to support and protect entrepreneurs, innovators, and other workers in the digital economy from fraudsters, terrorists, traffickers of illicitly obtained data, 
and all manner of criminals who populate the online underworld. It is worthwhile, therefore, to reflect about the opportunities as well as the threats present in the digital economy on one hand and the methods and strategies of promoting and protecting legitimate actors while deterring and suppressing malevolent agencies on the other, on the other hand. Data protection must serve the greater interest of the public by ensuring that we have sufficient information for effective and efficient delivery of public goods and services. However, we must also ensure that criminal elements do not hide under data protection or exploit it to perpetuate crime or evade paying tax. The context in which we reflect on this tire of tension matters. We are an open and democratic society founded on the principles of constitutionalism and the rule of law. We are also a market economy dedicated to entrepreneurial freedom and consumer choice as the foundational principle of wealth and success. We must allow maximum entrepreneurial liberty in order to reap the benefits of the free market economy and advance human well-being. Yet, we cannot permit the vulnerable to be victimized by fraud, exploitation, and abuse. We have an obligation to defend national sovereignty and protect society from cyber terrorists and online criminals. Yet, we must not use security and protection as excuses to claw away the fundamental rights and freedoms of citizens, especially on the matter of access to information. It seems to me, then, that it is important for all stakeholders in the data sector to always be conscious of limits. What are the constitutionally recognized and practically unavoidable limits to freedom of expression, freedom of information, and the right to privacy, as well as the state's authority in respect to all this. There must be a balance. I think what, what I'm trying, the statement I'm, going to, I'm trying to make here is there must be a balance between the state's responsibility to make sure that citizens have access to information in accordance with the Access to Information Act, but also protect citizens and whatever information that is private from criminals and other actors in that space. So there must be a balance between access to information on one hand and protection of privacy on another hand, and the nexus between the, those two, the nexus between access to information and protection of data and information is the balance that will give us the right equilibrium for government to access legally useful information for public good and for citizens. And there are details and information to be protected for, from people who use it for other purposes other than that which is legal. And uh, th that's the balance that the ministry, the various departments, and especially our dear commissioner must keep balancing so that we are in good space. In order for Kenya to realize the maximum potential of the digital superhighway, we must have a clear data management regime that is rational, effective, and promotes efficiency. It has to be promotive of our agenda for the digital economy, because progressively, it is now absolutely clear that the next billionaires will be 
on the digital economy space. And we must provide sufficient latitude for access of whatever information that is necessary for us to grow our space for entrepreneurs, for business people, for investors in the digital space. And precisely the reason why we are expanding the digital superhighway so that we can bring on board millions of Kenyans by making, uh, making it possible for them to access um, uh, internet from all corners of Kenya. They can transact with the government. They can do business. They can create. They can innovate. And they can do business on the digital space. And precisely the reason why I set up the ministry that has digital economy as one its big mandates. The government of Kenya is committed to working with all stakeholders to expand the space for creativity and innovation through the promotion of freedom of expression and also intellectual property rights. It is our intention to ensure that Kenya finally reaps its overdue dividend from the heavy investment in ICT infrastructure made over the last two decades. With six submarine fiber optic cables offering broadband connectivity, over 9,000 kilometers of terrestrial fiber optic connecting nearly in all county headquarters, geographical broadband coverage of 56% and mobile broadband penetration of 96% we are putting finishing touches on the policy and infrastructural framework that will switch on a historic explosion of productivity and competitiveness in our digital economy and in our entire Kenyan economy. I am looking forward to our commitment that in the next six months we will have 5,000 government services available on the digital space. Already, just to uh, put it in context, we had 300 government services um, as of two weeks ago. We have increased that to 600. We have doubled in the last two weeks. We now have 600 government services available online. And we are well on course in ensuring that we have 5,000 government services in the next six months. And I've also asked the Ministry of ICT to also work on a digital identity so that the big Huduma thing that never was, we can finally have as Kenya a digital identity. And I have told my good friend Eliud that by the end of this year, Kenyans must be able to identify themselves digitally. It is not, it is not the work of government to issue IDs. It is the work of government to identify Kenyans. Over the next five years, we shall construct another 100,000 kilometers of national fiber optic network to achieve universal broadband connectivity in the country. We want to enhance government services delivery by digitizing and wherever possible, automating critical processes and by migrating 80% of services online, as I have said. And we are developing the digital master plan and establishing a regional app for, to promote the large scale development of software for export. We expect the digital superhighway to play a tremendous role as a fully fledged productive sector on its own and an enabling infrastructure for the universal health coverage, agriculture, MSME, and manufacturing pillars of our bottom up economic transformation agenda for the transformation of our country. And just to state that we already have registered 5 million farmers who will participate this year 
in our subsidized fertilizer uh, platform that will be available online as a mechanism of eliminating leakage, pilferage, corruption, and inefficiency in the delivery of fertilizer and especially of our subsidy program. Data then does play a critical role in our development agenda and will play an even greater and ever increasing role going into the future. How we engage with data matters as a commodity, public as well as private good, data is essential. We must therefore embark on a robust process of enriching our institutional framework to ensure that our transformational agenda is aligned with the principle of personal data protection and that Kenya expeditiously concludes the process of domesticating the African Union Convention on Cyber Security and Personal Data Protection. For this reason, the Cabinet Secretary for Information and the digital economy has been tasked with taking up this matter with the Attorney General and the leadership of the National Assembly so that we can be in tandem with the rest of the continent. Data protection is critical to an economy and a state that is institutionalizing, digitizing, institutionally, in, intentionally, sorry, digitizing. We are committed to supporting the Office of the Data Protection Commissioner to ensure that it rapidly acquires the necessary capacity to effectively perform its functions. The full implementation of the Data Protection Act 2019 is overdue. Our commitment to competitiveness, innovation, digitization, automation, and the digital economy requires a credible and legitimate facilitator to anchor investor confidence. And I'm confident that the Office of Data Protection will give us that much needed value. This facilitator must be the commissioner. In order to be legitimate, the office must always demonstrate integrity, fairness, and commitment to promote the growth and simultaneously development of Kenya as a competitive digital economy and a global leader in data protection. The role is to promote, not inhibit, and to facilitate, not obstruct. In playing this role, the commissioner must pay due attention to cross-border dimensions of data protection. The, data, the National Data Center must therefore be equipped with the necessary capacity to discharge both dual roles. The launch today of the Data Protection Registration System is an important step in this direction, and it is highly commendable and appropriate that the system, which was developed by Kenyan youth, has been successfully tested and piloted. And I want to say a very big congratulations to those who have put this together. I'm also happy to note that the development of the system went together with the certification of 1,417 data handlers from both the public and private sector. This signals that we are now ready to inaugurate Kenya's data protection regime. In the spirit of this important day, and in line with the government's commitment to safeguarding the privacy of citizens, all ministries, departments, and agencies are directed to henceforth align their strategies, systems, and processes with the provisions of the data protection laws. I also call upon county governments to pay attention to this development and take appropriate measures within their constitutional mandate to achieve a unified wall of government approach to data protection. I now declare Ladies and gentlemen, with a lot of pride, the data protection registration system officially launched as we celebrate this great day. Thank you and God bless you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if we can just give another warm clap right there.
Your Excellency, with your permission, we have a buzzer that would like to just have that uh, done officially so that as part of your journey to comply with the Data Protection Act, you can now log on to the ODPC registration system to register as a data controller or data processor. And with this, that's what's going to happen. So, Your Excellency, if you don't mind, if you may just come and we synchronize this. And after that, we'd like to issue some certificates to those who've already complied. So, uh, yes, let's have uh, the CS and also let's have the data commissioner also join as we do this officially. And ladies and gentlemen, this will signify the journey for you to comply with the Data Protection Act that you can now log on to the ODPC registration system and register. Three, two, one. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The CRM registration process. Go to dataportal.odpc.go.ke and click on the account link. Click register as a data handler. If first time, click on the first time registering. Fill in the pre-registration process details. Select the relevant category, whether public or private. If your data resides outside Kenya, select yes. Fill in the safeguards the entity uses to safeguard its data. Fill in the previous year turnover, then log in. Click on click here to pay, then select the payment mode convenient to you and submit. Then click on click here to print to generate the invoice for presentation to the deposit receiving entity. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is now launched and with your permission, Your Excellency would like to, in recognition of the registration, offer four certificates to those who've been compliant and they are in certain categories. We have government agencies and that is represented by K, uh, NTSA. So if we can have the Director General uh, kindly come, then we also have not-for-profit organizations, Marketing Society of Kenya, MSK, Charles Karioki, kindly come forward. Then large enterprises, we have J uh, Jami Telecommunications Limited, Caroline Simba. And last but not least, small enterprises, we have uh, TechPal Africa Solutions Limited. And we have Trevor Obonio, who's going to be representing that. Ladies and gentlemen, we can give them a warm clap. They, have, they are now one step closer to being fully compliant uh, with Data Protection Act right here. After that, Your Excellency, with your permission, we'd just like to take three photos, after which we'll present a gift to you, and we can then end this particular occasion. So, I'll... Thank you. Thank you. If we can have the gift, please, that was to be presented to His Excellency. Kindly, let's have the gift come. Uh, the ODPC had requested to offer you this gift, just signifying the fact that this is the beginning of a journey that is definitely going to be successful. And as if you heard from His Excellency's speech, it is a journey that is now uh, got full uh, buy-in and support. Your Excellency, sir. Just three photos, so if we can have, uh, the CS is already here, then uh, we have PST DG Nairobi. Kindly, if you can quickly come to the front, uh, we have the DC and Deputy Commissioners uh, to uh, ODPC. So if we can have the photographers kindly, just do that very quickly. And the next photo after this, we'll uh, add uh, the, His Excellency.